Today, the soldiers and civilians of the Headquarters Military Intelligence Readiness Command paid special tribute to Lieutenant Colonel April D. Moncrief on the occasion of her promotion to Colonel. Our presiding officer for today's ceremony is Colonel Edward W. Minty, Chief of Staff, Military Intelligence Readiness Command. At this time, we would like to welcome Lieutenant Colonel Moncrief's husband, Rich, daughter, Abigail, son, Richard, parents, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Gail and Mr. Victor Latre, and in-laws, Commander Retired Bill and Mrs. Nancy Moncrief. Please stand for the playing of our national anthem and the invocation delivered by Chaplain Bukowski. Psalm 88 declares, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. As we reflect on the truth of this statement, please pray with me. Almighty God, thank you for your presence with us today and for your goodness in our lives and particularly in the life of Lieutenant Colonel April Moncrief as we celebrate her promotion to a Colonel. As our nation's leadership and army entrust her with increasing levels of influence and responsibility, grant her the vision necessary to capture your priorities for this next season of life. In blessing her, you bless us and countless others. I thank you for this, for her family, who have inspired and strengthened her over the tenure of long and distinguished career. I ask that your favor be upon her loving husband, Richard, her daughter, Abigail, son, Richard, her family, friends, leaders, and mentors who have stood by your servant in faithful support of her many years of service and leadership to our nation and army. Now, may the living and indescribable flame of freedom burn brightly forth from the shores serving as the beacon of hope for the oppressed and as a terrible warning for the oppressor. And may your gracious hand empower our soldiers, families, and civilian teammates here and overseas who sustain our army's efforts to defend this nation and fight and win her wars. Bless everyone here today and those present in spirit, bless and our communities and keep our army strong. In your most holy name I pray. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Edward McNeese. All right, well, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for taking time out of your busy day to uh, celebrate the achievements of Colonel Moncrief, and also to welcome her to the Merck. April comes to the Merck with a wealth of experience 
She served overseas and she served stateside in a variety of assignments. But what really stood out to me was April's passion for caring for wounded soldiers. Um, we often talk about selfless service and how it's a virtue, um, but April spent time on mobilization supporting wounded warrior projects, and that's a truly great and remarkable example for all of us to follow. She then went on to further help soldiers by getting into the education arena. She reminded me when she got here that uh, she was one of my guest instructors when, when I was an education battalion commander in uh, Germany. And it took me a little bit of time to remember that. Um, but that's a good thing because you don't hear about the good instructors. You only hear about and remember the bad ones. So um, it's, a, it's a thankless job. My point is it's a, it's a thankless job that, that April happily did. Um, and I think that further speaks to, to her character. So really, um, in closing, I'd, I'd just like to say that, um, you know, April, you've certainly earned this. The move from lieutenant colonel to colonel is a big one. Um, you're expected to not only improve your own organization, but to influence others outside of your span of control. We know that you're up for the challenge. Thank you. Rich, Abigail, Richard, and Lieutenant Colonel Retired Latrey, please join Lieutenant Colonel Moncrief in front of the flags. <clears throat> Audience, please remain seated for the publishing of the orders. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of April Diane Moncrief. In view of these qualities and her demonstrated potential for increased responsibility, she is therefore promoted to Colonel, effective 18 May 2023, by order of the Secretary of the Army. Rich, Abigail, Richard, and Lieutenant Colonel Retired Latre will now pin on Colonel Moncrief's new ring. So just in case anyone doesn't, doesn't know this, Colonel is the only rank in the Army that is not interchangeable on your shoulder board. Every other one is. So the, the joke in the Pentagon is you can always tell a new Colonel if, if their birds are uh, pulling rear guard. So <laughs> let's, let's not have that. <laughs> you guys are up to it. All right. There's a, there's, a, there's a name for these, I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 
Abigail Richard and Lieutenant Colonel Retired Latre. You may be seated. The military officer's oath is a combination of constitutional requirement, historical influence, and centuries-old custom. Through the first oath of office under the Constitution of the United States, for officers, non-commissioned officers, and enlisted soldiers date back, dates back to 1789, the officer's oath has been changed over the years. The version we use today was approved by Congress in 1884. Colonel Van Giesen will now administer the oath. Colonel Van Giesen. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Army's newest Colonel, Colonel April D. Moncrief. Thank you, Colonel Van Giesen, and to the G1 staff for all that you've done to make today special for my family and I. To my friends, colleagues, and classmates, Thank you for attending to celebrate this day with me. The United States Army is 248 years old and its purpose remains constant, to fight and win our nation's wars. The Operational Reserve provides the depth necessary to achieve defense objectives to that end. Today, when service in the Selective Reserve looks a lot different than it once did, retention in an all-volunteer force is a significant challenge. And one reason for that, as everyone in this room knows all too well, is that the burden of service falls not only on soldiers, but on their loved ones. Like the path taken by many traditional reservists, the trajectory of my career has not been linear, and it hasn't been easy. I have found, as most soldiers do, that hard work isn't enough to be successful. I've needed God's grace and blessings in my life, and the support of my family, community, and coworkers. I grew up in a military family. My mother is a retired lieutenant colonel and a Desert Shield, Desert Storm veteran. My father, now deceased, was a Vietnam veteran, and he would have loved to be here today. One of my grandfathers still living and going strong is a World War II veteran, and my other grandfather was a World War I veteran. I'm a descendant of servicemen and women who served with honor in every major conflict in American history, dating back to the Revolutionary War. And even so, there was never an expectation that I would follow in their path, only love and encouragement as I chose my own way. Gigi and Victor, you have supported me at every juncture, from bringing me homemade cookies when I was a cadet at West Point, to helping watch my children when I have been on extended orders, and for proudly ensuring that everyone in our small hometown knows where I am and what I'm doing, and joins in praying for my safety and mission success. Thank you. To my household six, Rich, thank you for being my best friend and biggest fan. I met Rich when I was a captain working at the Wounded Soldier and Family Hotline here at HRC Alexandria. He asked me out to dinner, but I was working shifts, and at that time we were working seven days a week. But I told him the only way I could meet him for dinner is if we went to a restaurant right outside the Hoffman building, and I would still be in my uniform, and right afterwards I would have to go back upstairs to finish my shift. Amazingly, he agreed. 
And then for months afterwards, he would bring me dinner and we would sit in the empty cafeteria of the Hoffman building and eat before I went back upstairs to finish my shift. That effort encapsulates how Rich has supported my Army career, literally from the moment that we first met, and constantly over the years since then. Even when I've said yes to missions without asking him first, which I shouldn't do, and I'm gonna try to get better at, <laughs> or when I can't find uniform pieces before I need to travel, and I elicit his help rummaging through every bin in our attic, when I'm gone weekend after weekend and he needs to adjust his work schedule to accommodate my flights and take over childcare, or when I have to cancel evening plans to be on last minute telecons, reviewing metrics and spreadsheets, and especially when the phone rings and it's a soldier who needs my help. He is wonderfully accommodating and endlessly patient. I would not have had the career I've had if it weren't for him by my side. Lastly, thank you to my brothers and sisters in arms. I have been incredibly fortunate to have the best of the best senior NCOs as my battle buddies, the absolute backbone of the Army, teaching me, advising me, and leading troops alongside me. Thank you to those who have been my right arm, as well as colleagues of all ranks that I've had over the years. Whether we've been in the mud, in an office, or in a classroom, I appreciate all that you did to make me successful. More, more importantly, I appreciate what your sacrifices mean for our nation, that you also raised your right hand and swore to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, knowing that freedom isn't free. Today is a testament that I have never been alone in my career. Thank you all for being a part of my service in the greatest army in the world. I look forward to the challenges that lie ahead. For God and country. Ladies and gentlemen, the soldiers and civilians of the Military Intelligence Readiness Command are proud of Colonel Moncrief and look forward to working with her as she takes on new and exciting challenges. Please stand for the singing of the Army song. today's ceremony. Please join Colonel Van Giesen in congratulating Colonel Moncrief and her family in the receiving line in front of the flags. They invite you to join them for a reception in room 104 immediately following. <laughs> 